Alright, how's it going folks? Tonight we're just going to do a quick little tutorial based on one of my earlier live streams um, which I streamed onto Facebook and uh, because of Facebook's image compression uh, it's a little illegible to read the actual parameters and operator titles so uh, someone named Wang Fei wanted to get a little bit more information on how I made uh, a look that's visible towards the end uh, that kind of looks like a heat map based on the audio spectrum. So, first thing we need to do is get some audio to analyze. So let's just use the built-in loop, which is uh, by Jeremy Caulfield, and we all know and love it very well. Um, well, you know what, we don't even need to hear it. We all know what it sounds like. I'm not going to pipe it through. Um, okay, and for simplicity's sake, let's just do this in mono. Okay, so you'd grab an audio spectrum. So now you can see the representation of the frequencies that make up the sound that we would be hearing if I piped it through. Um, but if you have Touch Designer, I'm sure you know this song. Okay. So then what I generally do is add a trim just to get rid of the little bit over here and here. Oh, another thing, high frequency boost just to try to make the highs kind of balance out. Um, okay, let's, let's trim out our sub bass and trim out our super highs. I mean, you don't have to do that. I like to do it. Uh, then I will usually resample. You can also resample directly in the audio spectrum chop, but um, if you do that, then the sample number that you give it will then get trimmed when you trim out all that stuff. So I, I generally just do that after. Um, turn off time slicing, new rate, new interval and absolute and we will make the length be equal to the width of the, um, the feedback spe the spectrum feedback trail image that we're going to create so I'll go with uh, 1279 since we're starting at zero uh, it's basically 1280 so we're going to make uh, a nice 1280 by 1280 trail. Cool. We'll nullify that, if you will, before we go to top world with a chop to top. There. Now we have a beautiful representation of our spectrum as a luminance on a strip, which in and of itself isn't that cool. But uh, one thing usually useful to do is run that through a constant with no alpha so now you can see we're in RGBA whereas before it comes out as just an R because it's only turning one channel of chop data into uh, pixel data and if I were to do RGB it gets all messed up because it, it's expecting three channels so you can just do it as a mono and then um, putting it through a constant turns it into um, RGBA, which is nice. Okay, <clears throat> then generally what I do is add a fit. Don't have a fit, just add a fit. Groovy, fit best, no, we want native resolution, barely see it there. All right. And then I generally slide it to the bottom. Which I did wrong. That's the X value. Okay. Um, and then 
scale up a little. Ah. The mouse is being a little weird. Brought it around in my backpack too many times. Okay, so there we can see a bit of the luminance coming through from the bottom. So now what we'll do is throw that into a feedback loop and then make it trail up. So, we'll add a feedback. Need the composite. Drag both of these. That. No. That's not a no. Drag the null onto our feedback to give that its target. Put these into add mode and then we'll also have our feedback frame translate up. Now let's go with one pixel for now per feedback pass. So there you can see our spectrum. Um, kind of want to play with this and try to do some of that uh, Aphex Twin face stuff one day, but uh, that's for another video. Um, got some cool chase patterns going up because of the uh, aliasing or whatever. Um, so now the question was how to make this look like a heat map and not just uh, black and white. Um, well, that's relatively easy with a lookup. So first let's make a ramp to pick our colors of this alleged heat map. So called heat map, I guess. Um, I don't know. What do we like? The blue. I don't know. I mean, that's not exactly the color scheme that most heat maps have, but it's something. Um, the main thing that I'm, that I'm trying to show you is, is the look up top here. So, I mean, you could put any sort of color pattern with a bunch of bands in there uh, if you want. Or you could even... Here, I'll create this now just so we can play with that too. You can use uh, noise as your color look up. Okay, so let's add a look up top. Boom. And just for the sake of it, here's what it looks like with rainbow noise. That's pretty darn cool. We went in here and um, changed the periodicity a little. Wow. Look at the colors. So, that's how you can apply a heat map style color scheme to any sort of other image based on its luminance. Or if you wanted, you could, um... Never mind. <laughs> we can cover more stuff in, in later videos. But this was just the basic idea of uh, turning your audio spectrum into a trail to represent spectrum over time. In this case, our y-axis is time. Um, and then recolor your luminance to somehow encode certain, certain values. And if you wanted, you could... Um, you could be more precise with your values by actually going into this callback table. So if you wanted certain value thresholds to, to be represented uh, by you know, certain colors, boom, you just uh, you would type that into your position, uh, 0 to 1 normalized. And then um, and you could input that programmatically from you know chops with, with scripts and whatnot. Uh, and then you know just enter your RGBA values. and there you go. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Ta-da.
All right, so uh, Wang Fei and everyone else, I hope that makes sense, and I'm happy to clarify further. So, post and comment wherever you like. Um, I'll post an example file in a few minutes. All right, thank you, everyone. Have a good night.